Gabor. Little one. Gabor. Tiffany. Oh, yes. Yes, filter. Uh, Gabor. Hold on. Since everyone asks for all my links, I'm going to pin my link tree. Hi, everybody. Hi. It's, oh my God, it's so cold in New York right now. Me and the pups are snuggling. Ugh. It was so cold. I ran back home today. Ugh. I'm letting my hair air dry. What's everyone doing? Hi. Hi. Hello. You probably have to make the reservations by tomorrow because everything has been booked crazy. Hi. You hear my dog licking my arm? It's my dog licking the lotion off my arm. You're funny. Are you single and can I submit my application? Yes, and I want to stay single for right now. I'm focused. Hi, baby. Hi. Any changes on mandates here? I don't know. It changes every day. I can't keep up. And honestly, I'm so fucking sick of hearing about the shit. I don't even pay it any mind. Like, I don't care anymore. I'm like, whatever. I do know that everything has gone up price-wise. Like, ridiculous. So. Schizo! My bestie! Hi. You hear my dog licking my arm? Hi, brown sweetie. What skin pen procedure... That was the micro needling laser. It was the um it's the micro needling laser. So you can see I don't have on any makeup. Okay. I just got out of the bath. I have on lotion. But you can see this is a week later. Over a week later. And everything high fat cat and um it's, it's great. My skin looks great. Um, tomorrow's a big day, even though I can't discuss it because people are fucking no nosy. No, it's not the Morpheus. It's, um, what was the name of the machine? The radio frequency laser. Thank you, CC. It's a filter. I was tuning in. I love, when I say I love Anthony Hamilton, I love Anthony Hamilton. Um, I got to take a picture with him years ago. I still have that picture. Hi, Sash Molina. So I decided I'm going to start going out again. Because I can't keep sitting in the house. I'm too bored. Like, you know, I get up every day. I make sure I do all my business stuff. Um, but I, I can't sit in the house anymore. It's just boring. Like, and I get all these invites. Um, but I never go. But I'm going to start going. I can't just be all work and no play. Hi, Casey. Kiss and makeup. Yes. Marge Tiffany. So, yeah. Hi, everybody. So, um, the book, I hopefully will be, um, you said no, it's what she said. Oh, thank you, CC, me. Yes. No, my real skin is flawless. I'm not going to lie, but the filter does help. You said, Pav said, stay in the house till springtime. 
I didn't know you knew Shice Bubs, Pop. Pop saw me at Bubs the other night and, and called up. That was funny. It's a small world. So, um, okay. A lot going on. The, the, the ghost writer was here from Orlando. Um, what's today? What's today? Tuesday? Hi, Travis. Hi. He keeps saying I didn't say hi. Hi. Given Marilyn. No, I'm just, thank you, but, um, I'm letting my hair air dry. I just put on a conditioner and, um, the Vita hair products I think have been making my hair grow. They're all natural. Shout out to Vita. Um, so the ghostwriter was here last week for three days from Orlando. So my book is almost done. We had to rewrite the manuscript. Um, I don't even know what day it is sometimes. I swear. Um, I finally had time to get my nails done and my feet done. These, my toes are the same color. You like the Barbie pink? Um, and then I went and, um, I went tanning. I went and got my hair done. The roots finally this week. Remember I went, I think that was Saturday. So this week I finally got to catch up on some things um, for myself because I've been busy, which is good. Oh, no, that was Friday I did the hair. Is it Friday? Saturday we, um, thank you, Sash Molina. S Saturday we photographed about 50, 50 more outfits for the Serving Looks website, which we're revamping. Um rebranding it's so much work having an online business people don't really understand am i german i don't get that one no i'm not german i i really don't get that one much it's a first no I've, I've been asked that before so anyway um you gotta you gotta shoot every single item you know what i'm saying hi steph you have to shoot every single item Unless you want to use stock photos, which you don't want to use stock photos. That's corny. Let me see. Hold on. Hi, I messaged your friend about donating clothes to the family whose house got flooded. Um, maybe message her again because she pulled up and we gave her a bunch of stuff. I know she works full time. Thank you. Thank you, Kobe. Um, so... You know, and it's never going to end because as as much as I get in inventory, new inventory, we're always going to have to shoot it. So I have to think of a way. I can't go to the studio every single time to shoot new merchandise. So I've been watching YouTube videos like, you know, cute ideas of shooting um, merchandise. Thank you, Kobe. Christina's dog died. Lucky. She's been hysterical. Poor baby. That was her son. And that was Marge and um, Gabor's little boyfriend. Atlanta soon. Maybe. I don't know. I have so much stuff to do. I swear. Um. So. <sighs> thank you, boss lady pebbles. Um. Marge Tee. Look at my baby. Look at this dog. Come here. Have you seen anything sweeter in your life? Look at this little angel. Mommy's precious baby. I love you so much. God, this is my little bear. Marge is 14 years old now. Marge is 14. I love you, dog. I love you, dog. Mommy loves you, dog. You hear her little wheezing? Mm-hmm. I just gave her, she was on Clavamox, which is a dog, um, antibiotic all week. Mommy had to stick the syringe in her face. She didn't like it. But you feel better now, don't you? Look at this little baby. Oh, I love you. You're mommy's precious angel. You can do no wrong. So, um, the book is almost done. I work with the ghostwriter this week, this last week. We did the serving looks photo shoot part two in Brooklyn um bunch of other um 
bunch of other things that I can't discuss, which are, um, you know, in the works. Um, oh, I love you. God. People don't understand our love. They don't understand us. You know how much, does anybody have a pet? And do you understand how much you can love your pet? Look at this little chunker bear. Mommy's baby. You're a little French model. Yes, you are. So, um, what else? Valentine's Day. Oh, let's talk about Valentine's Day. How uneventful that was. How I really was not thrilled about it this year because I'm not talking to anyone. And I don't want to talk to anyone right now because it's just a distraction. Um, I don't know. I did, um, just accept a date. Well, it's not even a date. I'm to call it my friend. Um, yes. Look at this little munchkin. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh. Yeah, you know, Valentine's Day should be every day. Um, and you know what's... Hi, Erica. You know what kind of kills me? It, it's... Everybody doing this whole stunt with the with the rose petals and all that for Instagram. Like, hey, we get it, girl. Your man loves you. It's cute. But it's like, hi, Amethyst Beauty. That's nice. But it's a lot of it, I think, is just like for show. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did have a guy do that for me one time when I was younger. I lived with. We had an argument. And my niece tricked me and said she had to, an emergency. I had to go pick her up. And then when I went back, he had the rose petals going all the way up the steps and then into the house and a bubble bath. It wasn't like on Instagram. It was a bubble bath with some candles and champagne and two glasses and one dozen of roses. Okay. It wasn't, all, it wasn't the thousand um roses and all that i would rather have the money i, I would have told him don't waste your money on this dumb shit okay <laughs> right little one oh, what's my valentine but yeah so i feel so bad i think about him too my ex his name was george that's when i lived in, in baltimore i really broke his heart i really was not a good girlfriend to him back then but i really wasn't ready to be i don't know i was and i wasn't I was like in my early 20s, I think, when I was with George. Yeah, I was in my early 20s and I was all over the place. But he stuck by me. Like, he really loved me. But I was no good at the time. No, girl. He got a girlfriend. He got a. Oh, he got married. He got married and had a baby because when my niece died, um, his brother follows me on here. So I reached out to his brother and I spoke to George because I had custody of my little niece at the time. And, um, where are you going, Marge? Where are you going, Tiff? Where are you going, baby? Where are you going, baby? Um, yeah, girl, anybody think about that boy from five years ago? Um, so he helped me a lot with my niece. This was when I was in my twenties. Thank you. So I kind of stayed with him because you know, he helped me raise my niece because my sister was on drugs. Um, and he was a good dude, man. He had, you know, he worked hard. He was, he had a good job. Like he was, he kind of got on my nerves. He was light skin. He was mixed. His mother was German and his father was black. He had nice, thick, curly hair and he had beautiful blue eyes. I got to show you all a picture one day. But he used to stand in the mirror all the time and be like, I'm, I'm, I'm a good looking motherfucker. You lucky you have me. And I'm like, oh my God, like you're so stuck up. Like, you know what I'm saying? But whatever. He was a good dude, you know? Um, but yeah, we were young. Um, we were young and I was still in love with my, my, um, other ex. It was just messy. I was young. I was in my twenties. You know what I'm saying? It was, I was too young to settle down. And even if I would have married him back then, we would have been divorced. So when I did speak to him, um, when my niece died a few years ago, he was like, yeah, I'm married. 
I said, oh, that's good. He's like, yeah, we have a son. He's like, yeah, she's my soulmate. And I'm like, this pussy whip motherfucker. He was a, he was a sucker for like bitches. Like he loved bitches. Like he was like, he was like one of them pretty boy. You know what I mean? Like he said, yeah, she's my soulmate. Well, I thought I was your soulmate too back then. Everybody's your soulmate. <laughs> everybody's your soulmate so yes yeah, so i guess i don't know if they're still together so i spoke to the brother shortly after he was like yeah his wife flipped out after you called i spoke to him literally for 10 minutes i haven't spoken to this guy in over 20 some years kenny's on here upstairs kenny's on timeout everyone upstairs kenny is on timeout upstairs kenny had an attitude outside of the building the other night helping me unload the car me and kenny got into it outside kenny is on timeout everyone upstairs kenny's on timeout just fyi so um long story short his brother told me oh yeah when you call i called you to tell you my niece died my little niece that lived with us in my our when i was in my 20s that i had custody of I'm calling to let you know when the service will be in Baltimore if you would like to come. So his brother told me, his brother told me, she flipped out and almost was crying. You're going to leave me and go to New York and be with Chrissy because she's famous and all this shit. I'm like, what the what? It's on Tubi, Timmy Henson. It's a 10 minute phone call. Nobody wants your man. If I wanted him, I would have had him back then. He would have married me back then. We went looking at houses and stuff like, hello. So, oh God, that's, oh God, you don't even want to hear that story. That story got real. That was like a, that was like an R. Kelly trapped in the closet episode. I can't make this shit up. So you want to hear it? I started messing with this Trinidadian dude named Richard. That was fine from the neighborhood, right? Dreads. He was really cute. He was like sexy, like thuggish. He was from Park Heights. I don't know if anybody knows Baltimore, but he was from Park Heights. Anyway, I met, where did I meet Richard? He was friends with somebody. Anyway, I started messing with Richard behind George's back. Because George got on my nerves with the pretty boy shit all the time in the mirror and fooling himself and whining and cry, baby. He was like pussy. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I started messing with Richard and you know, it was just, Richard was just whatever. And it was a lot more too. It was some business shit going on with Richard too, with, with my other ex. So it was all, ah, ah, ah. So long story short, and Richard was younger than me. So, but I never took Richard serious. One day I went over to Richard's house to pick up some money and I was in the living room and <laughs> I see a picture of a newborn baby. It's, you know, one of them big old houses in Park Heights. You know what I'm saying? Like the big old antique houses that's like in the hood. So anyway, I'm sitting in the living room waiting on Richard with his mother. And I see a picture of a newborn baby up on the mantle. I said, oh, cute baby. Who's baby? She said, that Richard baby, my grandson. I said, oh, what's I'm ho literally holding the picture. Richard comes down the steps. <laughs> he sees me in the living room standing there holding the picture of the newborn baby. And he runs, turns around and runs back up the steps. I swear to God. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. He literally came down, saw me, and took right back up the steps. <laughs> so anyway he came down i said richard i said th congratulations you're a father this is great hello me and him were messing around you didn't tell me you had some chick pregnant and you just had a newborn baby you scum anyway some chick that worked at the jewelry store i think at mondamin mondamin was it mondamin or the uh, reister's town road plaza she worked at Reister's Town Row Plaza at a jewelry store. Anyway, whatever. 
No, I didn't really care. I had a boyfriend I lived with. <laughs> but still, I still kind of cared because I liked Richard. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. He was like my fun. So anyway, I said, why didn't you tell me you had a baby when we left? He was like, oh, because I was going to show you the baby. I said, man, you could think of a better lie than that. You're a liar. I said, just whatever. Like, whatever. So anyway, long story short, <sighs> me and George break up. My niece, I waited. I had to wait till school ended in June because my niece was in school. And I already planned on her going back with her paternal father and sister. We worked it out because my sister was on drugs and she really missed her sister and ended up moving back with her father because she missed her sister. I said, this is where you belong. You belong with your dad and your sister. I'm your aunt. I'm going to always be here no matter what. I've had you for two, what, two or three years. So, you know, I waited till June to finally get away from George because he would get on my nerves so bad, accusing me of stuff. He was so insecure to be so fine and in the mirror all the time, staring at yourself. He was insecure. So his brother, the one who follows me now on Instagram, would come on the weekends because he was in the Marines. Right. And he would have off from the weekends or whatever. So he would come home or whatever. I don't know. Some, he was in the military. So he would come on the weekends. And he would take George out. They would go clubbing because his brother would always be cheating on his wife, Tia, who was a devout Christian. Oh, he was a cheating bastard. So he would always take out my man on the weekends to go clubbing, which I really didn't care. But I cared. I'm like, hello, you're taking my boyfriend out every weekend. What, to meet bitches? You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. Like, I didn't care. I was cheating. So who cares? Anyway, I waited for my niece to be done with school, whatever. Uh, uh, uh. The pool opened in our apartment complex and his brother was at our crib that weekend. And me and him used to fight all the time, always back and forth because I didn't like him taking my man out to the club all the time, right? Like, why are you coming around taking out my boyfriend? clubbing every weekend because you want to go cheat on your girlfriend, your wife, wife, your Christian wife, right? Oh, and you got caught. Let's not leave that out. He, uh, excuse me, Sean, you're going to have to get blocked for that. Uh, disgust. All right, look. His brother got caught cheating on his wife back then. You know what they did? His wife was such a Christian. His wife, they go to the woman's house that the brother was cheating on her with and prayed with the woman. They all held hands and prayed on it together for the affair. You know that's some real Christian shit. Because <laughs> would, it wouldn't have been no praying. If, you, we, if I would have found out about my husband with another woman... It wouldn't have been no praying going down. I'll tell you that much. All right. So this is all coming back to me now. So anyway, hilarious. So, <laughs> so her, his brother would come over every weekend and go out with my man. And I was tired of it. Like we'd always be fighting back and forth. We cool now. Like I said, he follows me. We follow each other here on Instagram. He's barely on here. So anyway, he, we were at the pool one day and said something to me disrespectful. And I knew my man told him it was a secret. It was some shit between me and my boyfriend that my boyfriend told his brother that his brother should have never knew about me. So his brother said something and his brother was in the pool laughing and George, my ex, was in the pool with him laughing at me. And this is when those platforms were out from Aldo's. I had on, I had some big white platform sandals. I literally picked up the sandal and wham, threw it in the pool and hit his brother in the head. Good aim. I should have been in the NBA. I'm telling you. I said, Phew. and I hit him right in the head. And I said, that's it. 
I'm out of here. I'm moving. I literally, on God, my friend had a car dealership like two miles up the street. Got in my car. And I, I, I was like Sharon Stone from Casino back then. I had the white Mercedes coupe. What is this? SC? I had pictures. It was white with gray. It was the one in, um, they had, it was in Paid in Full. I think, yeah, I think it was the one they had in Paid in Full. It was white and gray. The C, C30, I don't know. I have pictures. But anyway, I got in my Mercedes and I had the short blonde hair and I had on my North Beach leather shit all the time, but it was summertime. I wasn't wearing that, but I don't know, like whatever. So I went up to the car dealership. I said, give me a truck. Give me any truck, pickup truck. I literally went to the home, started packing up my shit. Had my neighbors from downstairs come. I said, here, come on. I'm going to give you all some money. Help me pack. Started taking my shit out. George and his brother come back from the pool. They see me with a truck outside. And I'm I'm packing my shit up. Having the kids downstairs load up the truck. Because I already had another apartment on the low with Richard. Ha-ha. Oh. Ha-ha. Oh. Ha-ha. But we weren't living together. It was more like a trap house kind of apartment. But it was nice. It was still decent. It had three bedrooms. It's nice. All right? It was mostly for that, though. It wasn't no whatever. But I said, I'm moving into that spot until whatever. My niece was already back with her father. I was free to go. So George was crying. He started real tears. I never saw him cry real tears. He started crying real tears. Don't leave me, please. I'm sorry. I said, you fucking ever in your life stand here and let your brother disrespect me? That's all you've done is let him disrespect me. You think shit's funny? You think shit's a game? I said, you gonna see? Now you by yourself. Ah, ah, ah. So I pack up my stuff and I move just like that right into the trap house, which is a couple miles away. So He's over there begging me to come back, coming, th- popping up with flowers. Please, I'll do anything. Come back, come back home, blah, blah, blah. When honestly, it, I think honestly, it was more about the bills. And then he's like, oh, you owe me this for this. And then I said, here, take it, whatever. Take it, peasant. Because at that time, I had lost all respect for him. And he wasn't a peasant. He was a hardworking guy. But I had more money than him. Anyway, so long story short. Long story short, Richard's at my house, at the little trap house apartment that I got now. Now I'm single and I'm doing what I want, finally. After taking care of my sister's daughter and having all these responsibilities, PTA meetings, and I, 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 in my early 20s. So Richard's over there chilling and I have on a little nighty. And we drinking, I think we were drinking Hennessy. Ah, 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 chilling. Watching movies. So, this, okay, I also had, uh, no, okay. This is what I had. I traded in, okay, so I traded in my Mercedes and got the Lexus GS300, which was the car to have. It's in 1993 or 94. This is how, I'm a little older, a lot older. Black with tan interior. I had pictures of that car too. I was the only chick in Baltimore that had this car. I was the shit. Okay. Because it was like the Lexus just came out. You know what I'm saying? That in the coop. It was in all the rap videos. Yes. So. <clears throat> so. I had just got the GS300. So me and Richard were chilling. And Richard smoked. I don't smoke. So Richard was like, oh, I need some rolling papers and this and that. I said, okay. He's like, I'm going to go to 7-Eleven. I said, take the car because Richard didn't have a car because he was young and fine. He ain't have no money, but whatever. I said, here, just take the car and go to 7-Eleven. So my car was gone. So anyway, I'm laying there waiting for like round two or three for Richard to get back. And then my little nighty negligee with my drink. And... At the door, I open the door thinking it's Richard. 
No. It's a throat to my neck. It's George. Literally, he I never seen him like this because he never was abusive. He never put his hands on me. He I, I'm up against the wall. He came in the door up against the wall, my his hand on my throat. He saw Richard at 7 Eleven in my car. Now, he had seen Richard around the pool. Hi, Drew. He had seen Richard around the pool and stuff, but he didn't know I was messing with Richard. It was our little secret. So once he saw Richard in my brand new GS300 Lexus at 7-Eleven, he came to my house and flipped on me, crying, crying again. I loved you. How could you do this to me, you S-L-U-T? Ah, ah, ah. I honestly felt bad. And I'm like halfway, I'm pretty drunk. And I'm in this sexy outfit, negligee. And he got his hand over my throat. This is, this is why I say it turns into the R. Kelly trapped in the closet video. So now Richard comes in and Richard got a nine right here in his, in his shorts. He had on some jean shorts. Richard pulls out the gun and puts it up to George. George is And George was like, yo, George immediately calmed down. Because Richard was a gangster. That's what I liked about him. He was, a re he was the real deal. Okay. So Richard pulls out the gun. This is in my living room. Of my little secret apartment. So Richard pulls out the gun. And he's like, Con and George, I said, no, no, no. I said, no, ho, no, no, no. I said, no, please don't. No, 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 no. Like, I was like, no, no, no. Because I still love George. I didn't want nothing bad to happen to George. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want nothing to happen to him. And I don't blame him. He was hurt. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have rolled up if I would have seen a bitch in his car at 7-Eleven and did the same shit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want him getting hurt or shy. I didn't want none of that. So, um, I said, Richard, please just leave, just leave, just go, just leave, just go, go, go. I don't want the police come in. I don't want nothing going on here. Just go, just go, just take my car and leave. Just leave. I said, George, leave. I've made Richard leave first. And then I told George to go ahead and leave. I said, calm down. We'll talk tomorrow. So, um, Richard came back a little while later. But I felt so bad because I I really realized how much George loved me and how much I had hurt him. And I didn't mean to it. I didn't mean for it to come to all that. But I couldn't live with him either with letting his family member disrespect me every single weekend. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. And a bitch called the house phone. This is before cell phones was really out. Like we had cell phones, but it was like you had to use your minutes after nine o'clock. Um kind of thing so you know we had cell phones but it wasn't like everybody used their cell phones like now you know you used it like but you didn't really use it so anyway we all had house phones so I, that's another reason i left george because a girl called the house phone once asking for george i said who is this she's like such and such um i said wait a minute this is this is george's wife you know you're going to exaggerate of course you know I'm like, this is his wife. He was like, um, he was like, she was like, oh no, he didn't tell me he had a wife. I apologize. I met him at the club the other night. This and that. And I know it was a club up in the shopping center we always went to. It was like the local club. I forget the name of it. So I know she wasn't lying. I flipped. I said, why would you give? Giving bitches our house phone number? You what? And then I found another number in his pants pocket another time. This is when you wrote numbers down on paper or napkins. So me and him had been off. You know what I'm saying? It was over. Like it was whatever. But we stayed together for the sake of my niece, who loved us both and needed us, and we both loved her to death. But it was over. So, you know. So after the thing with Richard happened and I found out about the baby and all that, I just didn't want to be able to deal with him either. 
I did on some business shit. I dealt with him on some business level stuff, but um, I decided I wanted to be back with George like a month later. My, I was like, oh, I want, you know, I want to go back and work things out with George. I felt bad. So look how the tables turn. I go over to George's house, my old apartment, my old house, whereas I left some things. I left some furniture and all that because I, I didn't move. You know, I didn't have, I just took what I took when I left. I go and knock on the door. Because he changed the lock, so I don't have the key no more. Surprise! I'm like, hey. I came with the, the trench coat on with the sexy outfit underneath and all that. Thinking I'm going to surprise him. He opens the door. He's like, what's up? There's a bitch standing in the living room. I said, oh. You have company? He's like, yeah. What's up? I said, mm, I try to break your ass. I said, oh, and she's, she's, she's standing there. I said, motherfucker, I said, let me in this bitch. I said, let me in this motherfucking house. I said, her ass sitting on my motherfucking furniture. I said, you got her in my house. He's like, this ain't your house no more. Remember? He's like, why don't you go call Richard? Oh my God. He said, I'm telling you leave. Or I'm gonna call the cops. I said, you would, you fucking pussy. I said, you would call the cops. Cop caller. I said, you a cop calling ass bitch, pussy. I said, that's why I left you anyway, because you a pussy. I said, don't, I said, who calls the cops, right? So he, he told her, call the cops. And guess what? She picks up the cordless phone, which was mine. I left it there. You know, the regular cordless phones. Like I said, we had house phones. This was in the 90s. I said, bitch, I said, Oh, I took off my, I think I took off my shoe. I threw my purse. I don't know what. I said, bitch, call the cops. I'm going to fuck you out. I can't say it all on here. I said, she on my motherfucking phone. Give me my phone back, bitch. I said, that's my phone. And she's standing there smiling, calling 911. I said, bitch, you better call an ambulance too. I said, because you're going to need it. <laughs> cops came I they didn't arrest me I said I left some things over here I said he won't let me in to get them I said I'll leave no problem I wasn't trying to get arrested over his stupid ass I said I'm gonna see you though bitch I said I'm gonna I'm see you and I told him too I said you gonna get you gonna pay for this so you call, he called the cops on me what a pussy move you pretty boy bitch really that's what you did because that's how hurt he was over the Richard thing. So. Oh, and then after the Richard thing, all George's brothers, because he had brothers too, were asking me, where's Richard living all that? They're going to go. I see you all ain't doing nothing. Y'all pretty boy family. Y'all ain't doing shit. I said, Richard will fuck all y'all up. I said, stop it. Where where's he live? Pulling the gun out of my brother. This and that. I said, oh, stop it. Y'all ain't doing nothing. I wasn't going to tell them where Richard lived. Get out of here. Anyway, I said, so that was it. That was humiliating. I embarrassed myself by going back over there. The bitch was kind of cute. She wasn't as cute as me. But I was like, you know what? This was just messy. It was all a mess. And honestly, I just didn't even really want him back. I guess I didn't want anybody else to have him. Does that make sense? So that was that. But that's who I called a couple years ago to let him know that my niece had passed away and his soulmate got all upset because I called. I'm not calling for him. I'm calling to let him know that my niece died, that he helped to raise and take care of for a few years. You like the pink? It's the Barbie pink. Thanks. I just got it. But ain't that some shit? So... I had my share of the drama. That's why I say Valentine's Day. This all goes back to yesterday. With the Valentine's Day. I've had the flowers and the rose petals and all that. George did that. Um, but honestly. I don't even care. About. Being in a relationship right now. The drama. Because the way these dudes out here. 
or moving right now, I'll be in jail. Because I can't. I can't. Would I ever dated a guy from the UK? Um, I have dated a guy from the United Kingdom, from London, but it, 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 he lives there. You know what I'm saying? You like my ring? Thank you. Um, I actually prefer European men. I, I honestly believe my husband is in Europe, not here. Because I prefer European men. These men over here, especially in New York, not all, but a lot of them have bitch tendencies. And they want a bitch to take care of them. You want to spoil me? Hold on, you speak in my language. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> I can't even go back up. Listen, put your money where your mouth is. Anyway, um, so long story short, I've had a lifetime of love. I'm in New York. Come to Montreal. You think it's cold here? You know you're free. You're freezing in Montreal. Do I want a Jamaican man? I've I've had a Jamaican man. He treated me good. I've been to Jamaica four times. It's been it's been a long time though. I haven't been to Jamaica in a long time. He got supported. <laughs> I gotta stop. All I, I you know what? It, it, <sighs> yeah, I got too much flavor for a, a European guy. So, um, yeah, Montreal is a mini Europe. A grown man treats his woman like a queen. Exactly. Good luck finding a grown man here in New York. I'm over it. The silliness with these guys, I can't. They want to play the games. I'm not with any of the games. I'm telling you, once I see you heart eyes on the bitches' pics and all that, I'm so turned off. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm good. You thirsty. So, um, yeah. I just remember that whole show. I'm surprised I never had a stroke. All the stress I've been under in my life with dealing with men. And that's why I say I need a break. I need a break from all that. You know what I'm saying? I just need a break. I was always in relationships. I always had boyfriends. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's nice to be by myself. I seem toxic. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't we all a little toxic? <laughs> Thanks. That's a nice compliment. <laughs> yeah, I have PTSD. I have ADD. Yeah, I can't. Toxic. What What exactly does toxic mean? I That word is so overused now. People just, it's so trendy to use the word toxic. You're so toxic. Thank you. Exactly. I am a catch. That's why I'm particular with who I, I spend my time with now. Um, I'm very selective. Um, because, you know, it used to be just more like, hi, Amethyst, yes. You know what it is? I used to just want to have, it was kind of codependency. When I just have someone around, um, I didn't want to be alone. The abandonment. The, the abandonment issues that I had as a child. Um, you know, I always just wanted to be someone, someone, you know, around. But then I realized I'm in the wrong company. Um, so I've done a lot of work with myself over the years. And I'm more in touch with what I want and what I don't want. Thank you. I have wisdom. I do. So... <clears throat> I like how there's fake uh, fake therapists on here diagnosing shit when they need to worry about themselves. Exactly. Everyone doesn't ex deserve to experience my soul. Exactly. I agree. So, um, yeah. That's why I say I was impressed about um, 
I wasn't pressed about Valentine's Day. Because it's just another day. And honestly, <clears throat> thank you, Harry. Yes, thank you. Um, honestly, if you're with the right person, I believe every day is Valentine's Day. Um, and I, I really feel like I, I choose the wrong kind of guys. Like, I don't want, I don't want to keep dating these fun younger dudes because they're just not there mentally. The drama in your life doesn't match your big heart. No, it's true. And you know what the sad part is when you're a pretty woman and an attractive woman, even just a woman of any kind of about anything or, you know, it seems like the more attractive or pretty you are, a lot of guys are more insecure and they try to like take you down a few notches. Has anyone ever experienced that? It's like they, um, they want to, instead of elevating you, a lot of them want to try to degrade you to try to, to try to keep you there so you don't leave them. You know what I'm saying? And I've experienced that a lot. Um, a lot of guys have tried to compete with me and I don't like that. Once you start trying to compete with me, that's not cool. Like I don't compete with men. That's not cool. Don't take me out of my feminine, ele feminine element. Yes. The men, exactly. Thank you. They are very jealous. The men here are very jealous of, um, of women. I don't know why. <clears throat> it's a defense mechanism because they know they don't deserve you. Exactly. They will project their insecurities on you. <clears throat> why do you keep dating the guys of the path of destruction? That's why I'm not dating. I don't want to date anybody because I don't even date anybody um, that I meet that I like. It's always some bullshit. I really try to give some people a chance and they really prove to me every time why I'm wasting my time. <laughs> I don't even want to get into the um the last couple ones. And they're yeah, you're right, they're boys. So it's like and I have an online I did. I set up an online dating profile, but I haven't even answered any of the messages. <clears throat> and there's hundreds of messages. Um, and I haven't answered any of them from all over the world. So, um, you know, yeah, I haven't been to Salsa Con Fuego since before the Rona. Yeah, I can't handle the insecure, immature and jealous and the competitive and, oh, when they talk about other women to me, ugh, come on. That is the worst insecure, like, okay, I get it. You're not a virgin. You've had other women in your life. I don't want to hear about it. What woman wants to sit and hear about other women? I don't even care. I'm so busy with my business, with my charity. Yeah, they only want, they only want sex. And hey, sometimes I only want sex. That's cool. I'm not mad. It's all right, but you know, when I do, oh boy, okay, ah, damn it, when I do <clears throat> meet someone, I'm just gonna be off the grid like i'm I'm leaving like. I ain't going to really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they want you to take care of them. It's just pathetic. Or they, they, they got the baby mother drama. Exactly. They got baby mama drama. If you think I'm going to fight with a female over you. Or believe that you're spending the night for your child on a holiday. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> 
you said, I know I haven't been to Europe since before Corona. I've, I've been in Europe a few times. I love it over there. You said Bay Area men are like that too. I heard that. Yeah, they live with the baby mother or the roommate. It's true. It's true. They'll try to put you down. Um, you know, and then you see, and I, listen, I don't put any other women down. I always try to uplift everybody. But then you see the type of women they're used to dating. It's like, no wonder he treats me like this. Because he's never had anybody like me on my level. He's used to club thoughts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't even blame yourself. You know what I'm saying? If that's all they're used to is garbage and hood rats, that's, they don't know what to do with a, a real woman. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You can't ever take that personal. They like you. They like the idea of you, but they can't handle the reality of you. You know what I'm saying? Look how long my hair is getting. This is that Vita hair growth. It's Dominican. Um, uh, the lady that owns Nail Lounge and her mom came out with this. It's all natural. And I've dated every kind of guy. So people tell me, oh, you need to try this. You, should. you can't tell me what I should try and what I shouldn't try. Because I've tried all kind of guys, older, younger, different ethnicities, different economic levels, career wise, all that. It's their character. It's not about anything else. It's the character of them. It's just how they are. I've been using it um, maybe, a, maybe a few months. And Dawn's been using it, Amethyst Beauty. Dawn's hair got long too. Look at that. This is air dried. I just got out the bath. I let it air dry as much as possible. Because, you know, I don't want to put as much heat damage. So. But yeah, it's getting long. I'm just letting it grow. So um, I try not to blow dry it ever. That helps a lot. And then I only touch up the roots. I don't really run the color through the ends. Yeah, the Vita, um, Vita hair growth. It's like, um, she's got the sets. It's all natural products, like vitamins and stuff in it. So, back to Valentine's Day. Thank you, Spenny Lou. That's why I don't care about Valentine's Day. I've been there, done all that, and you know what I'm saying? I'm happy for those who are in love, and you know, that's great. But no one should feel like a failure because they're single. And no one, thank you, Amethyst Beauty. No one should feel like a failure. I'm choosing to be single. Because I don't want stress. I can't be stressed out right now. All my money is invested into my business, my nonprofit. We got the, the shelter opening up in Hempstead, New York. Like, I got a lot of big things on the table. I can't have anyone... Male or female. If you one of my so-called friends, girlfriends too, and you want to bring me a bunch of drama, bitch, you got to go too. Because right now, I'm focused. So if a man want to come around and act like a fucking fool and get on my nerves and play the me too and oh my God, and why didn't you pick up your phone and ah, 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 and all their issues and, and knocking you down. And you ain't all that Chrissy and this and that. I can't talk to you. You cannot be around me. Because I cannot have that in my zone right now. I'm focused on moving to the next level in my life. You know what I'm saying? Hey, from Italy, yes. So, that's anybody. I don't care who it is brings me drama. I can't be bothered. If you're not around to enhance my life, if I can't learn from you, if you're not making me smile, if you're not making me laugh, like if you're not bringing me some kind of um, stress relief, if we're dating, I'm not just talking sexual. I'm talking like just to go out on a nice date, 
have some laughs, conversation, have a, a, a nice meal and some wine. Just to, to get my mind off of all my business. Instead of stressing me out, questioning me and, and investigating me and lying on me and playing them mind games with me. I don't, I just, I don't have, I'm, it's exhausting. I can't. So I'd rather be by myself. Look at me. You think I can't go out and get a man? All I got to do is walk outside and think I can't get a man. That's the easiest thing to get. But what kind of men are out here right now? What kind of men are out here right now? I'm not competing with these boys and 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 scammers and liars. I don't want to be caught up in none of y'all bullshit with the bullshit and, and ugh. And then have bitches calling my phone. Oh, my other, my other best friend. Ugh. Had a bitch call her phone the other night. Oh, I'm such and such as wife. And my friend been messing with him on and off for two years. His wife, wifey called. Come on, I know where you live, this and that. Ugh. My girlfriend's like, girl, bye. Like, ugh, nobody cares. So, you know, it's not just me. It's the drama. Like, who got time for that? I want to make money and be productive. And listen. Not all men cheat either. You know what I'm saying? Not all men cheat. They really don't. Because a lot of men are too busy to cheat. A lot of men appreciate what they have. A lot of men were actually raised right. So I don't want to hear all men are dogs, all men cheat. That's not true. I, I don't hate men. I love men. But where they at? Where the good ones at? I can't. So, you know, um, hi. It's just, you know, you got to really know yourself and be able to be by yourself to be right with anybody else. I'm not going to come and be your therapist. I'm not going to want you to come and, and fix me and Dr. Phil me all day. Like, that's not what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to go through things and this and that. But that's not my job. Is to, My job ain't to fix nobody. And you're not here to fix me. We're supposed to enhance each other's lives and, 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 and add to each other, pour into each other. You know what I'm saying? Not just be a whole dump all my whole li life issues and childhood trauma on you and expect you to deal with it. My sister did that with her husband. And that's why her husband moved in with someone three weeks after my sister died. And I wasn't even mad. And that's my blood. My sister was on and off of drugs for years. For maybe 30 years. Um, depression, drugs. And he was a good man. He They were together 10 years, legally married. And he put up with, and I can say he put up with a lot. And he was clean and sober. And he stayed clean and sober while my sister kept going out and relapsing and actively using. And he put up with a lot. So I can't even be mad when I knew he already knew this woman was probably cheating on my sister. But there's only so much somebody could take. My sister was a whole project, a whole therapy project. And he stuck around and he did the right thing. But he's happy now. We're still friends on Facebook. I see him with his new wife. They're married now. I've met her. She's cool. I can't be mad at that man. He did the right thing by my sister. He stuck around longer than most men would have. I can say that. But he deserves to be happy too. And if he met somebody who he's happy with right now, then fine. I can't say, oh, you didn't mourn my sister long enough. No, man. You made sure my sister had a proper service. We had her cremated. You know what I'm saying? You made sure you did everything up until the end. And that's all that matters. So my point is, there are people out here that will stick with you 
for the wrong reasons because they're going to feel guilty if they leave you because you put all your shit on them and and you feel like oh my god how are they going to survive without me that's all that codependency guilt bullshit drama come on that's why i say work on yourself before you get into a relationship I don't want to be that one like my sister that's dumping all my shit on somebody and expecting them to put up with it because 99, 95, 99% of the men out here ain't going to put up with it like he did. You know what I'm saying? So I notice a difference from, and it's sad to say, because this is my own sister. God rest her soul. He was miserable. I see him glowing with this woman he's with now. I see it. It's night and day. So. He's really really happy. I see the happiness that he didn't. I didn't see in him when my sister was alive. It was more like tolerating. Because it was more like. He was her therapist. And she was always insecure. And accusing him of cheating. And he was a good looking guy. He did get caught a couple times and all that. But you know. My thing is. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I feel like if I did meet the right man right now, I, I'm definitely ready to be in a relationship. It's the fact of. Are they ready? Because I can't deal, like I said, with the games and the disrespect and the constantly monitoring me Oh, FaceTime me. Prove where you're at. Show me whose else is in the room. Like, if you don't trust me, don't be with me. And that's part of the problem of being a pretty woman or any woman. I mean, but, you know, when you're really attractive and you get a lot of attention, it's hard for men to deal with. So, you know, you got to find somebody that's really secure enough to say, you know what? She's with me. She's not disrespecting me. She's not looking at him. I know how to handle myself when I'm with a man. I'm not staring at no man. I'm not googly eyes at no no man. I'm not doing none of that. You know what I'm saying? I know how to respect my man. And if a dude comes up to me, sorry, I have a boyfriend. I'll even say husband. And they'll say, well, where's the ring? I'll be like, this ring, the ring he got me is too big to wear out in public. Somebody might try to kill my ass for that. It's a big ring. I'll be bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? But... My point is, <clears throat> I know how to be respectful if I'm in a relationship. Hi, Justo Frost. Um, but I expect the same from the man I'm with. And the problem is, a lot of times, a lot of these guys don't know how to handle these situations. If I'm out with you as a man, and a woman is ah, 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 little drunk all up on you, it's up to you to handle it. Don't put me in a situation where I got to, you're going to compromise me going to jail because of my temper and fighting with a bitch because you don't know how to tell a bitch I'm here with my lady. You don't see her standing right here. Excuse me. Have a nice night, ma'am. But a lot of some guys, a lot of guys will try to use that to triangulate and make it. Oh, look, she wants me to look at her staring at me, baby. Ah, 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 like you supposed to do something about it. I've been in that situation. I'll leave. I'll be like, you better go say something, man. Go, go get her number. What you want to do? What you want me to do? You going to have me out here looking bad? I dated a guy like that. He would purposely do it. To try to knock me down, take me down some notches with... Bitches that were not even on my level. One bitch had on some slippers in the club. Some slippers in the club. I'm not in the plastic surgery business anymore, babe. Sorry. I do have a friend who is, though. If you want to DM, I'll give you her number. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't have the time for it. You understand? I don't have the time. I have my charity. I have my business is businesses and I'm good I got my pets remember we got on this this thing I said what day is it I, I don't even know I didn't realize it was Tuesday um, that's how busy I am 
Um, and that's a good busy because it's all constructive things and it's the things that I prayed for and I'm making them all happen. No, this bitch really had slippers on in the club and he, he, he had me like, ah, ah, ah. You said you could tell you from Baltimore. So, you know, um, you're not going to have me out here competing with bitches and fighting over you. For what? They can have you. I'm not playing those games. That's energy that could be used to make money. Hello? I want to make money. That's it. And if we can't make money together, you know what I'm saying? So, um... But a lot of a lot of these men here in New York want a woman too that's gonna to take care of them. It's pathetic. All they have are outfits and sneakers. They don't have nothing. They got outfits and sneakers and maybe a chain and a ring or maybe a watch, if it's even real. <laughs> and they're always on Instagram fronting with other people's shit. So, you know, um, and I don't even care about the material shit. When I say I want to make money, I want to buy buildings. I want to have assets, more assets. I want to keep putting my money into other things to make money. I don't want to just go out and keep buying shit. I don't even want to go out with my nice jewelry on. Because people are getting robbed and killed now. All that. So, I don't even care about all that. I just want to keep having that that those those streams of income where I can travel and have life experiences, live my life, meet new people, eat new food, see things I've never seen, see places that I've never been, and that's it. And stay out of the way. And not fight with anybody and not have drama with nobody and mentally stress me and put me on an emotional roller coaster. Of all the games and ugh, the wondering and why you didn't pick up your phone and all that. I'm good. I am so good on that. I'm not going to let nobody stress me out. Ever again. I've been there. So I'm in a really good place in my life right now. I am going to start going out with my friends. Um... We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start going out again. But honestly, I'm not going out to meet guys. I'm just going out because I'm sick of sitting in this house with a damn baby Yoda doll every day. And my dogs. I love my dogs. Thank you. I'm glad I made your day. Um, not going out looking for men. A club? That's the last place I'm looking for a man. Usually got an alcohol, substance abuse problem, you know, out every night. I don't want no club nightlife guy. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't want a club nightlife guy. So I'm not out in a club looking for people. But I am out socializing. Um, Because there's also women in clubs that buy. Now I have clothing, jewelry. I have my, my lip glosses that are trademarked. I have lingerie. So when you're out networking, you're giving out your cards to women that will order you wearing one of your outfits that you sell. It's networking. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's good to be seen. You know what I'm saying? You always got to kind of keep your house out there. So oh. <sighs> these questions are too fast. I don't go to Foxwoods. I don't gamble. Thank you. I'm a great conversationalist. You like the lip gloss? Go on my, um, we're revamping my website, servinglooks.shop. I have about 50, over 50 different colors of lip glosses with my brand, Serving Looks. Um, I did just sign a podcast deal with a producer in Los Angeles. I got a, I do got a studio here in Midtown Manhattan though, because honestly, for me, for me to do something, I got to do it right. Hi, butter, good music. How you doing? Uh, I can't do all that, um, emailing and lining up because I just like to show up and be me. Does that make sense? So, um, a producer is good for that to do all the, um, 
coordinating everything. Thank you. I just got to think of a good name for it. Um, like I said, the ghostwriter was here last week from Orlando for three days. The book is done. We're just <sighs> polishing it. And I don't know what I'm going to call it. Thank you. Um. So, yeah. And we're doing definitely, uh, Netflix needs to give me a deal. Yeah, but they don't pay. Netflix don't pay. I'm on Tubi right now. Finding Chrissy is on Tubi. Tubi pays everybody. Anybody trying to do um anything independent, Tubi pays the most for streams. So my show right now is on Tubi. It is going on to the other, everything on the podcast. Anything goes on the podcast. A lot of stuff that I can't talk about on here. Um, what was I going to say? So yeah, Tubi, Finding Chrissy's on Tubi. We're about to do season two. Upstairs Kenny is now on timeout. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's on Tubi. It's called Finding Chrissy. So, um, yeah, I got a lot going on, man. You love the show. It's funny. It's just my real life. It's just, it's my life. It's just my real life. Um. <sighs> I'm tired. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock. Past my bedtime. Yeah, so. Uh, a lot of good things going. No, Kenny had an attitude helping me unload the car after my photo shoot the other night. Bitching. So I said, don't touch my shit. Put it down. He's like, thank you, live, love, laugh. Oh, thank you. Um, I said, don't touch my shit. Go back in the building. He's like, you woke me up. I said, then you should have said you'd come out and help me. So whatever, it's stupid. Anyway. Um, yes, I will be having all types of guests. All kinds of topics. Uh, um, so yeah. It is what it is. I will thank you everyone for tuning in. My little cuddle munchkins are over here grumbling thank you amethyst beauty one of my favorite followers um i just you know um i just take it day by day one day at a time you know listen if you have a dream do it don't wait for people don't use anything as an excuse that you don't have support trust me I didn't have any support, any family, nothing. I'm a high school dropout, ex-stripper. Just changed my mind one day that I wanted to do certain things. And I started moving in that direction. And God started putting the right people in my path and the right opportunities. How about that? So don't put off shit and you're doing this next year. Everybody says I should take over the Wendy Williams show. I know. Then they ain't going to let that happen. They already got that Kiki Shepherd chick, I think. Um, I would be perfect for that though. I totally would be, but you never know. The podcast could lead into something like that, right? Build it and they will come. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Um, I think Wendy had some health issues. I don't know. So. Oh, thank you, Miss Divin CC. Oh, you're better than Wendy. I suppose that's her show and that's her lane. Be the Chrissy Monroe show. That would be my show, right? You never know. You never know. Look how long my hair is getting. I'm telling you, that shampoo, it's called Vita Hair Growth. And I'm telling you, I'm not just saying this because they cool and I know them. My hair really is growing from that shampoo. And this is blonde. You know how hard it is to get blonde hair when you bleach it and all that to grow? Look at that. I'm dead ass. Oh, Sherry Shepard. Um, am I watching Love During Lockup? I was until now I don't have cable. I got rid, rid of, um, thank you. I got rid of the cable. And I got the, um, we haven't started doing the podcast yet. Um, 
I got streaming now. I just got Hulu. Oh, I was watching the Pamela Anderson, Tommy Lee thing tonight. Gag. I can't. That was cute. Um, I don't know. She sent me the whole, the mask, the shampoo, the conditioner, and then two bottles of leave-in, one tonic, one big tonic, and one small tonic. But it's good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm into the streaming now. Because really, the cable was a waste of money. I'm not home enough to watch that. All that. And it's the same shit. So the streaming's way better. Yeah, so, um, no, I didn't watch that. Um, so, yeah. I watched the Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson show earlier. Yeah, so I'm going to look at all these movies and stuff now that I have Hulu. I'm feeling, um... I'm feeling like I have a more variety now. Because I've always had Netflix and Amazon Prime. But it's like it's the same shit all the time. So we'll see. But I'll be tired of Hulu in a minute too. So. Alright. I'm about to go. Thank you for everyone. I'm going to leave this up. So you guys can hear the stories from earlier. Which were entertaining. Um, She has a place called the Nail Lounge. Yeah. I did watch the Tinder Swindler. That was funny. It wasn't funny. But. Ugh. Honestly, he kind of inspired me to do it. I'm like, damn, people out here are really giving it up like that? For him? He looks like a little weasel. And he was getting millions? Imagine. Hello? Um, Yeah, so it's called Vita Hair Growth. Look at that. Look at that. Even the edges, everything. Because I used to get extensions... And the braids ripped all that out. This stuff is like fertilizer or something for my hair. I'm telling you, I don't, I'm living. And then um, I drink protein shakes because you know you got to have the nutrition, the protein inside too. So, all right, guys, I'm going to leave this up. You guys can watch um, the stories from earlier if you missed my little dramatic story. Yes, but love you guys. I'll come back on um, soon. I have appointments tomorrow. I got to get up early, so. <sighs> um, I wash it like three, every three days. It's not good to wash your hair every day. You have to let, you have to let the natural oils in your hair too, you know, get in there. But also, you don't want all that buildup on your scalp either. So, you know. I say like every three days, but everybody's different. I wash my every three days, but then I let it air dry. See, it's nice and air dry. Thank you, Miss Da Vinci. Thank you very much. All right. Bye guys. Love you. Yes. Vita, V-I-D-A hair growth. Vita. Hold on. Let me look on my other phone. I'm going to show you all the page. <sighs> Like life. They don't have a beauty hair salon. But they have a nail salon. I know the mother and the daughter. They have 116,000 followers. I'm telling you this shit works. Look at that. It's all natural. That's the page. Vita hair growth. Y'all catch that? It's worth. Trust me. You see my hair. Is growing. All right, y'all. I'm out. Mwah, bye. I love you guys. Thank you for joining.